What's up everybody, it's Josh here. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to customize the top header in Divi. Now, by default, Divi gives us the option to have a phone number and an email in the top header along with social media icons, all of which are put in place in the theme customizer settings. Now, what I'm gonna show you here is the method I use to put different call to actions and different menu items in the top header. Because often clients will ask me to put maybe an address up there or maybe like a request a quote button or something like that. So let me show you some examples of how I've used this. Here's a recent site I did that has not only the phone number but their text number their address along with their social media icons. Now this site is a little bit more busy than I would prefer for the top header, but the client loves it, so all's well. Here's another example where this client not only has their main call to action menu links, but they have their phone number that I customize, their WooCommerce car items, and their social media icons here. And then finally, this client wanted not only their primary number, but their secondary number, along with a link to their patient portal. And you can see that this icon is customized. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do all of this and more in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and dive right in. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna nix this phone number and email because these are set up here in the theme customizer. And if you're new to Divi and you're not sure where those are, let me show you where those are because we're actually gonna delete them for the sake of this tutorial. You're going to log into your theme customizer and then you're going to go into header and navigation and header elements and that's where you're going to find this phone number and this email. The reason I'm not going to worry about these is because though they can be very useful if you just have a phone number and email, we want to put some different links in there and we, we can't really, I mean you could adjust these but it can be a, a very, very much a pain. So what I'm going to show you how to do is to utilize the secondary menu which is located in the top header. Now, you'll notice when I took the email and the phone number out, the social media icons automatically floated over to the right in the top header, which I like. I think that looks good. Your eye reads from left to right, so generally I like to keep my top header things aligned to the right. So now that we've got that set, we're gonna go ahead and go into our dashboard and we're gonna go to our menu. So we're gonna go Appearance, Menus, and by default, when you go to your menu, you're gonna see your primary navigation, but if you wanna do a menu in the top header, which is what we're gonna customize, Divi gives us this option right here for top header, also known as secondary menu. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. And I've already got this set as our secondary menu. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna play around with some custom links since it's not actually going to a page. We're just gonna give this the pound sign because it's not actually linking to anything, but we're gonna give this, let's put our phone number in here. We're just gonna use this fake phone number here. So we've got that all set up. Let's do another one. Let's do request a quote. Request a quote. And then finally, let's do one more that, um, you know, I like that in the retina group site. Let's do portal login. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this menu. And we're gonna go ahead and go back out to the site. All right, and automatically you can see that the secondary menu is in there where there's three options and it moved the social media icons over to the left. Now what I wanna do is I actually wanna put these social media icons back over to the right of these. So I'm gonna right click and then do inspect element. If you've been following my tutorials at all recently, you know this is how I literally adjust all of my websites. It's the same trick I use over and over. So we're gonna go ahead and find where these top menu social icons are located. And right here, we can see this has a class. Here we go right here, top header social icons. We want to float this to the right. There we go. So all I had to do was do float right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this code and I'm gonna bounce over to my style sheet. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and just drop that code right in there. And now we can really start having some fun with these icons. Again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give these kind of like these menu icons and then we're also gonna just adjust these a little bit to make them look seamless with this top header. Now, we're gonna use the exact same method that I used on the actual menu here and that is using a before element to place these custom icons. So I'm gonna go through some of that pretty swiftly. If you did not get a chance to see that previous icon menu tutorial, please go back through my tutorial and it's gonna walk you through more detail because we're gonna go ahead and dive right into this. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the phone number. I'm gonna go back into my menu and I'm gonna go into custom link. I'm gonna dive into this further. Now what's cool about this is just like any menu in WordPress, 
you have this option for screen options, and this is gonna give us the ability to put extra CSS classes in there. You could put a link target if you want that to go to a different window, a different tab. So we're gonna have both of those selected. We're gonna go ahead and close that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this a class. I'm gonna give this a class of, I'm just gonna call this top phone. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this class to style in CSS, we're gonna style that and give it an icon and give it some cool effects. So we're gonna go ahead and use that and we're gonna save menu. We're gonna go ahead and bounce back over to my style sheet and I've got some code saved that we're gonna drop in here. Okay, so I just pasted the settings that I have right now that I'm gonna walk you through for this top phone class. So first things first, let's go ahead and save this and let's go out here, refresh, and I'm gonna walk you through each piece of this code to show you how this works. So let's go ahead and refresh. Okay, so now that it's pulling up that icon, let me show you how this works. And we'll go ahead and uh, we'll, do, we'll, style, we'll style this a little bit more, but let me show you what this, how this works. So this has three elements to it. The first is the top phone class, which is kind of the wrapper of the actual elements. The A means that it, it is a link, which we're gonna style the actual text that is a link. And then the before element, just like my previous tutorial with the menu icons is what's pulling that little phone number. We're telling this that it's coming from the ET font family and this content right here is the actual phone icon and we can adjust the sizing and the spacing all right here. So the first thing that we're gonna look at is I can tell there's some spacing right here. So I wanna use inspect element and right now I had, if you look here, I can go into my class and I can see, okay, top phone, that class that I put in there is right there. So let's scroll down and there we go. I can see that the width is at 148. Let's go ahead and bring this down a little bit. Now you'll see if I get it too close, it's gonna jump. So watch this. If I go too close, it's gonna jump like that. So we do not want that. So you'll have to play around a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and set this, eh, maybe right there at, at 124. So I can go back into my style sheet here. I can go to 124, that looks good. And bam, we're done with one of the elements. Now, let's go ahead and do request a quote. I'm gonna go back into my menu options. I'm gonna go to request a quote, and this one I'm gonna call top, uh, let's call it top quote. So we're gonna go ahead and save that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate all of these settings, and I'm just gonna replace the phone with quote. So let's go ahead and copy that. So top quote, top quote. Now, if we save this and we go back out to the site, I can go ahead and refresh and we should see, there we go. So you can see the phone icon and you can see it's a little jumbled there because again, since this is a different width with, with the text in there, we need to actually just adjust this a little more. So I'm gonna go back up to the class where I can see top quote and we're gonna wanna jump this up until it evens out. So let's go up to, Maybe 152, that looks good. So I'm gonna go into top quote and adjust the width of that wrapper to 152 and save. And now finally, yep, you guessed it, we need to change that phone icon. So let's go ahead and refresh here. Okay, so again, request a quote, we don't want that phone icon, we want a different icon. So I'm gonna go into my elegant themes icon list, which again, I'll have linked in the show notes for you. And let's say we wanna put maybe like a mouse in here instead of the phone number. So just like the previous tutorial, again, please watch that if you haven't already, as the, uh, the menu icon tutorial. But we wanna take this, again, we wanna use what's after the X and before this little semicolon. So we wanna do E07E for that mouse. So we're gonna go into the content and we wanna do E07E, we're gonna save that. And now if I go back to my site, we're gonna refresh and we should see that mouse for the request to quote. And there we go, easy peasy. So we've got two out of three, let's go ahead and do that final one, the portal login. So we're gonna go back into our menu, same steps as before, we're gonna to go top, we're gonna to call this just top login. And you'll notice I'm not using the dot here because it already knows it's a class. We wanna save the dot for the actual style sheet. So we're gonna copy this little segment of code again. Oop, let me grab all of it. And we're gonna go top login, top login, top login. Save that. Now I tell you what, let's go ahead and find a nice login icon in our list. I kinda like the retina group login cause it had that like digital cloud. There we go, yeah, right here. So let's do this. So this one's gonna be E070. 
or zero. So we'll make sure it's zero and not O. So we're just gonna change that to top login. And now with that saved, back out to our site and refresh. Boom, there we go. So you can see right there, we just need to adjust the width here. So just like before, we're gonna inspect element. I'm gonna find that class of top login. And you can see right here, which is pretty cool, in the secondary menu as a whole, you can see the class I put in in each one of these, and that's where we can have some fun and style this even more. So top login, we're gonna drop this down, we're gonna drop this down to, yeah, 118 looks good, because again, if I go too far, it's gonna bust it. So let's, I tell you what, let's actually go like 115. That looks pretty cool. 115 and save okay so that looks really good you can see just a few you know a few menu items we put in there with the same method that i showed you previously in the previous tutorial on how to add those icons we can really spice up the menus and that's how i did all of my previous sites now lastly let me show you how we're going to tweak these social media icons i'm actually going to do this the exact same way as the previous tutorial where i showed you how to customize the footer icons which i'll make sure i link to as well but in case you didn't see that, and in case you want to kind of play around with some of these, what we can do is, again, we're using inspect element, we're going to go ahead and look at the top header icons, and we can see in here that we're going to mess with the actual link itself. We don't want to mess with the entire block, we just want to mess with the, uh, the actual link. So let me try giving this a background color. Let's say white. And I tell you what, let's do the actual color itself. Um, for right now, we'll give it purple, but I want to match that top purple. So that looks pretty good right there, and that's cool. Let's go ahead and give this some padding. So this is going to give some padding between the edge of the, uh, the, the background color and the actual icon. Let's do like five pixels. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. And then finally, let's do one of my very favorite CSS tricks, and that's to give this a border radius, which is going to make this a nice circle. Let's try 25. I always do 25 and it seems to work pretty well. So that looks pretty good. And then I tell you what, let's go ahead, let's adjust, let's, let's give this an actual height because you can see it's holding right on the bottom there. Now you could go in and you could adjust the padding and the margins on the actual top header, but that can be a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna go ahead and give these an actual height of say 20. Um, Let's do a little more. You know, I might have to adjust those either way. So let's not even worry about that height. Let's go ahead and take this code now that we've got it. And again, these social media icons are only gonna be adjusted on the top header because if you just do this without that top header tag, it's gonna adjust all the social media icons around the site. So we're gonna go ahead and drop that in there. We're gonna nix that height. That looks pretty good. Now, I tell you what, let's try actually doing a negative margin. Let's do a negative margin top. And let's try 10 pixels. Oh, see, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and bring that down a little bit though. So about right there. That actually looks pretty darn clear and, and pretty flush. Um, the last thing we might try is to make sure these are perfect circles. So let me add back in that height, but let's try 25 pixels. And let's try a width of 25 pixels as well. Okay, so we know that is a perfect circle. And that looks pretty good, except we can probably bring these down just a little bit. Maybe 22, that looks pretty good. 22, there we go. Yeah, that looks that looks pretty darn good there. And then you can see they're just not perfectly centered, so I might just try adjusting the padding. Maybe to uh, five looks good. Let's go ahead and adjust the height and the width again to see if we can even these out to make these look real nice. Yeah, that looks pretty good right there, so we'll do 24. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this code and we're gonna go back into our style sheet. We're gonna drop it in there and our padding was at five. Okay, so now let's go ahead and save this and refresh. I tell you, well, you know what? One last thing we wanna do is I feel like these look a little far apart. So I'm gonna go back in here and I can see that each one of these social media icons has a margin length of 12. We're just gonna bring this down. Yeah, five looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this little section top header social media icons list, which are the icons themselves. And oh, we don't want to put that in there. We want to put that below it. Okay, now let's go ahead and save that and refresh. And that is looking pretty darn good. The only last thing that I might do is I'd like to go in here and just give this a little room in between the two. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into 
you can see this has an ID of secondary nav. And all we're gonna do is just give this a margin right because we wanna just give this some space. So we're gonna do margin right. And let's say maybe 15 pixels. Boom, that looks perfect. So you can see all I had to do is just add a little margin to the right. If I were to take this down, it's gonna overlap them. I can just bump that up and that looks really good. It just kind of separates the two a little bit. So I'm gonna copy this section of code here and we're gonna drop this in our style sheet. And guys, we are done. We just, just a few lines of CSS and using the secondary menu, we really took this whole top header to a whole nother level. Now, there's one last thing we need to do, because I know what you're asking. What about mobile? Yep, you guessed it. We need to just make a couple of tweaks on mobile. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click inspect element. And you can see automatically I've got my menu popped open there. Yep, wouldn't you know it, these look a little bit jumbly on mobile. Now, you could do a media query and you could just tell these, the, the secondary nav to be uh, display none, you could tell them to, to be off on mobile, but I kind of like having these in the menu as well. So I'm gonna inspect element and I'm gonna look at the actual class itself. And I can see that right now it has a width of 124. What I'm gonna do is on mobile, I'm gonna give this 100%. We're gonna do that and that's gonna make it go the width of the actual menu. So let's go into our style sheet and I'm gonna add this little section right here that tells us that once it gets to 980, which is the mobile tablet view, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make some adjustments here. Now, off right off the bat, I know that we wanna do top phone, top quote, and top login at 100% which is gonna make those look better. And I tell you what, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can see this better. So the next thing we need to do is we just need to change the icon. So we're gonna go, again, I can use inspect element and I can just hover over before. So the before state looks okay, but we need to make sure that color, for whatever reason, that color changed on mobile. So we're gonna do color white. We're gonna make sure that all of those are white. We're also gonna adjust the margin. The margin looks like it's bumped up a little bit. So we're gonna do margin top. Let's give this a margin top of 10 pixels. That looks good. And then finally, we want this to look like the regular menu and we wanna adjust the margin right just to give that some space. And let's try 10 pixels there as well. And boom, there we go, looks pretty good. We might try 12, that looks pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and take these settings, copy them over here as well. And you can, um, you can organize this however you want. Since this element already knows all of these settings, we're actually gonna just take this out and we're just gonna put what it does not know, the new settings that we add for mobile. So we're gonna duplicate this twice and yep, you guessed it. We're gonna put quote and log in. Now, we're gonna save that, and we're gonna go out to our site, we're gonna refresh, and fingers crossed, when we look into mobile, this should look good, and it looks the same here, because again, with this media query, we told the settings just to change once it hits 980, but I'm gonna go ahead and inspect element, and here we go. Go ahead and scroll down, and boom, looks awesome. Looks great, looks really, really cool, and it's pretty pretty much seamless with the original menu. So, guys, again, that's how you customize your top header in Divi. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, have a blast adding some new elements here, making your clients happy, and having some fun with the top header in Divi. Thanks, guys.